Glory to Jesus. My brethren, peace of the Lord. The brethren who are online with us, the ones who are at church, I'm going to invite you to stand up. Let's open our Bibles in Luke. Luke 24. Luke 24. From verse 1. Let's read the, the entire chapter because there's so many important things in every verse and the brothers have written down and at home and the brothers know about the story. So Luke 24, 1. No primeiro dia da semana, muito de madrugada, foram elas ao sepulcro levando as especiarias que tinham preparado e algumas outras com elas, e acharam a pedra revolvida do sepulcro, e entrando não acharam o corpo do Senhor Jesus. E aconteceu que estando elas muito perplexas a esse respeito, eis que pararam junto delas dois homens com vestes resplandecentes. E estando elas muito atemorizadas, e abaixando o rosto para o chão, ele lhes disseram, por que buscais o vivente entre os mortos? Não está aqui, mas ressuscitou. Lembrai-vos como vos falou, ainda, estando ainda na Galileia, dizendo, convém que o Filho do Homem seja entregue nas mãos de homens pecadores e seja crucificado, e ao terceiro dia ressuscite. E lembraram-se das suas palavras. Amém? Os irmãos podem estar assentados. My brothers, the word of the word, the Lord, the Bible, it shows us the, the true history of Jesus. There are many theories out there that Jesus, he didn't, uh, didn't resurrect that his body is still inside of the tomb, then this and that. But there are more than enough uh, proof, physical proofs of people that saw Jesus resurrected. There's no way that we can talk otherwise. And here, at the beginning of the chapter 21, you, we can actually see that. Here it shows the moment that some sisters, they went to the temple to actually finish what it wasn't done on Friday, the day that Jesus died. Because at the day that Jesus died over there, before the sun's the sunset, no, before the sunrise, before the sunrise, the sunset, before the sunset, the body of Jesus was was required by Jose Matea and Nicodemus, and it was quickly before the sun, the sun down, before it started Saturday. It was his body was put it on the tomb of him. Jo Joseph of Arimathea. Joseph of Arimathea was a, a man of goods. He had prepared a, a little space for a little space, a little apartment, a little place for whenever um, he passed away, he was put in over there. So now Jesus, he was put in at this place. Many, many say that the woman's at the next day here, on Sunday, they went to the wrong place to seek for the body of the, the Lord. But why? Because they were so concerned and they were getting everything ready. And the Bible says that when they went over there after Saturday, 
on Sunday, the first day of the week, they went, he, they went to the tomb. They didn't go to the wrong place because for sure they saw, they followed all the path, all the ritual that was about taking the body of the Jesus out of there quickly, um, the little preparation because they couldn't do what it was a custom for them to do it. So now Jesus was put in, in a tomb. The soldiers, uh, the Roman soldiers, they put a rock, a really big rock inside of, inside of the tomb. It's a two tons. Have you tried to move a rock that weighs two tons? There's people over here that, that deals with, what's it called? Brick. There's people here, they, they suffered a little. I only laugh from, from far because, you know, painting, I don't have to carry much weight, but to move a rock from the front of the tumble is not for anybody. It had to have this whole structure. For you to move two tons of rock, and, and them, if you, if you look, if you look in another, if you're looking, Marcus, when they were going from their house to the tomb, they were thinking, hey, who's going to move this rock for us? Who's going to move this thing? How are we going to go there? How are we going to answer? How are we going to answer the tomb? Having a rock of two tons in front of it. Who's going to move it? So the disciples, they had already, the, the strong ones, they didn't even want to think about it. They, Peter, uh, they had already left. It was only the sisters there. So when they get there, the soldiers, the Roman soldiers, they saw it was them that built all of that. They were the one that put the rock over there and they were actually protecting the body because they knew something was about to happen. But they had only forgotten about the word. The women, the women they forgot about the word. Everybody forgot about the word. It was the prophecy. The prophets, they were talking. Jesus said that at the third day, I'm going to die, but at the third day, I'm going to rise. And them over here, they are the proof that they they were waiting to actually see the body of Jesus right there. They were going to finish it up, put all, this, all the oils, all the preparation that they couldn't do on Friday. They were going to finish right there. But when they get there, we can read here that the, the rock was moved. The rock was moved, and they were surprised. They were wondering, the wonder that they had, who's going to move the rock? When they got there, the, the rock was already moved. Jesus wasn't already, wasn't anymore inside. Just like we sing our songs, he, he had been resurrected. Glory be the name of Jesus. So, when they got there, they saw two angels. In other passages, they, you can see that... Um, it says that Jesus was there and uh, they asked him and they asked him hey what are you guys looking for like oh, we're here to finish it up the service that we couldn't do on Friday and they just said but why are you looking why are you looking for the the, the one that's alive inside of the, in the middle of the death that's what the angels asked them they asked why are you looking for someone that lives in the middle of the ones that are dead. Imagine imagine you set up a meeting with someone. Right? Oh, let's go let's go out to eat. Let's go out to eat something. We we haven't gone out. Let's go to a restaurant. Let's go to Bruna Vitalis. Let's do a little advertisement to Bruna. You know, what if she gives us a little discount? But uh, alright, let's set up a let's set up a meeting. Let's go eat over there. So I'm gonna go to the cemetery uh, this time, that time uh, to to pick you up. Is that how we do it? No, nobody does that, right? Nobody does it. They went. They truly went to try to find Jesus dead, the body of Jesus. They didn't go there to see Jesus alive. Nobody does that. Nobody goes like, oh, I'm going to go to the cemetery, this and that. Just wait for me over there and I'm, I'm going to pick you up. No, nobody does it. So that's why the angel said, you guys are looking at the wrong place. Jesus, ain't, Jesus is not dead. He's already resurrected. He, 
they he won everything for you. Go go tell the people outside to go testimony, and uh, and say that you guys don't remember that he said that. That's it. So as soon as the angel said that, so it felt like a little glove. So they went. And they remembered that Jesus had actually said. He had mentioned that he wasn't going to be that. He wasn't going to stay that. And they actually went out to, to tell people. They went out to find the Lord amazed. They they found uh, the people. They found Peter. And they said, no way. Don't worry. Don't worry. We're going to look at it. <laughs> Just like Pastor Sabato said yesterday. Uh, Peter said, oh, we're going to go tomorrow there. We're going to go see of ourselves and just just leave it to us. And they went over there. They went to check it out. And they saw it. what they had just saying was true. And now Jesus, he, he gets in a, and shows up to two disciples. Not, not two of the elevens. Uh, he only he's now just walking walking back walking back home he left his trip he was walking about seven miles something like that so it was about seven miles for him to get to his house in Mimo Mimos and he, they were like frustrated because Jesus had died the disciples that were following the leader Jesus the Messiah, he died, and everything was over. The world was over. They didn't have any any earth anymore. And uh, once Jesus gets close, uh, Jesus gets close, and he's like, "Hey, hey, how you doing? What what are you guys talking about? What's new?" And then they're like, "Wait, wait, you don't know?" And he says, "What happened?" And Jesus was there, just wondering what was happening, why, what was going on, why everybody was talking. Imagine Jesus there, um, listening to them to talk. Oh, but you didn't know that this happened to Jesus, a Messiah. You know, we even thought that he was the one sent by God. Some women over there, they actually said that he was going to resurrect it today. They actually went over the tomb. They didn't see the body. And we were just here. My brother, the the man, they forget really easy about the prophetic. The man, he seeks and he wants to live only about the history of Jesus. He forgets really, really easy about the word. Jesus, if Jesus promises something today, I bet in a week you're going to forget. If Jesus tells you something today, he gives you a sign and he gives you a dream. If he says, don't do this, because if you do it, it's not going to end up well. In other words, Jesus does that. The Holy Spirit does it. The Holy Spirit visits us and, uh, and visions, revelations, dreams. He t they testify on us. And we just forget. Easily. Really easy for us to forget. So, even the word, we forget easily. And Jesus now, he was talking to him. He was actually teaching him a class. He went over there, and he started from Moses. He went back. He went all the way to Malak Malachias. Malachi. And they're like, you guys didn't remember what they were talking about Jesus. What he how could you guys just forget it's something so important? The prophecy, the, the, the prophet was talking the word of God in the Old Testament and all the all the writings Isaiah 53 talks about him how how this was going to happen to him you guys don't remember? Jesus Jesus told them everything but they forgot my brothers the word tell us that man he forgets really easy of what's important for our lives and the Lord he he has a lot of patience with, with a man. A lot of patience with people. When do you remember the word of the Lord? When do you remember to seek the Lord? One of those times that you remember to consult the Lord. 
when do you remember a, about a, a, a biblical verse? Why? Only at the only at the times, only at the struggles. The, the, the people only remember at the struggle when the struggle is big, when you have no place to go. And they say, Jesus is my pastor, and he's going to provide me with everything. He's going to deliver me from everything, all the darkness. From the battle shadow of death. They only remember when it is convenient. And people forget easily. But the Lord Jesus, He's so lovely. He's so kind with people. He has compassion with men. Who here has uh, read the Psalms 103? Psalms 103. Oh, only Elias oh, here in the back. You still have time. <laughs> Maybe before. Maybe before you go to sleep, just get home and read Psalms 103. You guys will see how Jesus has compassion of men. Jesus don't judge us by our sins. Jesus knows every single one of us. He knows that we commit, that, that we forget about things, that we commit sins, that we are creatures, that we lose patience easily, that we ha we change our mood really easy and it says over there psalms 103 i'm gonna read it here real quick and it says and just like the father um it is just like the father understands the, the son the father jesus also understand us so if it wasn't from the love of god we wouldn't be here today if it wasn't from jesus to win our enemy we wouldn't be here today. Do you know why Jesus has compassion for us? Because Jesus went through everything we went, we were going through. Because Jesus knows that at the time of the struggle, at the time of the heat, at the time of the, of the difficulties, your nerves go up when everybody's starting to... Everybody, when, when your boss is already getting in your head, uh, you just feel like jumping on his neck. Jesus knows about everything. Jesus went through everything. But he has this control. Why? But because he's God. He's Jesus. So that's why the Lord knows that when we forget about the word of the Lord, it's not because we want to forget. It is because we always forget. It's normal. Jesus knows our structure. He was the one that made us. We are creatures of God. He was the one who created us. So everything we have, He knows. Every single hair, He knows how many how many hairs we have in our head. Nothing happens without the permission of the Lord. A, a leaf doesn't come out of the tree without God saying yes. He knows that when we are in a struggle, here the, disciples, here the disciples were upset because they were waiting for uh, the Messiahs were coming in. He was coming in to win and beat the Romans. He was coming in to give us the, the new identity. He was going to go and fight all the other kings. And they, said, and, they said, and they thought they were saying, oh, my people ain't going to be under this Romans people. Anymore. And Jesus knew that they were upset. They were frustrated. But you know why? Do you know why Jesus had patience with them? Because Jesus is love. He loves every single one of us. He doesn't give up on us. He doesn't. You can be upset or stressed out. And maybe you might have a reason. Right there. You see? Oh, oh there's uh, someone that's a uh, cruzeiro. Uh, but it's part of it, you know? The Lord knows us. He knows that we're sinners. He knows that we are sinners by nature. All the way with Adam. But he has compassion. He was telling them. And he said, people, it's... There's no way. Like, you guys don't remember... You guys don't remember things? It's there. It's written down. All the prophets still were talking about it. The prophets knew. And my people, now we have in our hands the Bible of God. We have from Genesis 1-1 all the way to Revelations 22. 
What is the last verse? Yeah, you guys are bad. Yeah, Pastor Sabato, we have to to teach this uh, this people again. Let's go. Revelations 20, 22, what? 21, what? Yo, we gotta help. People, we have in our hands the word of the Lord revealed to us, written down, the manual for the Christian, the manual of the servant of the Lord. If you want to always plead the Lord, just go for the word. When Jesus told them, here, look, the disciples told them, it was said that this and that, it was said what was going to happen. And it started from Moses, Moses and from all the prophets. He was explaining about everything that was written down in the, in the Bible. And we have the, the word of the Lord in our disposal right in front of us. Today, we cannot commit mistakes. You can't commit a mistake. But you, you commit a mistake knowing what's going on. And Jesus will love you regardless because He's love. He knows us. The man commits mistakes because they don't know what's written down in the Bible. Why? We commit mistakes because we don't know what's in the Bible. Destruction. Because if we knew everything that Jesus said, all the words, everything that happened to Israel, everything that happened to the servants of the Lord, we wouldn't commit mistakes. Because we have someone that is bigger than everything. And now Jesus goes and talking with the people and verse 24 says the following and they come to the city where they were going to and he did and he did just like he was going a little farther how many times did that happen to you how many times were you waiting for the answer from the Lord how many times are you waiting for an answer from a prayer you're over there, anguished, and that struggle that only you know. And you pray to the Lord and say, Lord, have mercy on me. Help me. I need to do this. I need to do that. The Lord, have mercy. And the answer doesn't come. It looks like Jesus is going away. It looks like Jesus, he doesn't even care. How many times has that happened to you? If we go back in the Word, the Lord always done that. Do you guys remember the servant, the servant Bartimaeus, the son of David? Oh, have mercy on me! And Jesus just kept going, and he was, he was asking Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the disciple said, Hey, hey, um, please stop. You know, this is the master. But Jesus stopped and said, Hey, come, come here. The the woman from from Kennedy, Kennedy. She, she went over there and uh, she asked, oh, Lord, have mercy on me, son of David. And Jesus didn't even care. He was just acting like nothing was happening. So she just left. She was from, she was from a woman from Canaan. And the uh, disciple said, oh, I cannot just give, get the, the, the food from, from the people and give it to someone that I don't know. And she said that even the dogs eat the, the leftovers. And after Jesus, after Jesus got to where he was going, she actually went after Jesus with the with the the girl, with the little girl that had that was demon possessed. And the disciples said, "Lord, uh, there's a, this woman here. There's this woman here that kept screaming, coming after you." And Jesus was quiet. He didn't say a word. The the word of the Lord said that Jesus was quiet. And when she got there, and uh, and she said, when she got to the house, and she said, look, even the dogs are eating the leftovers. Then Jesus looked at it, and he said, your faith saved you. Lazarus, the sister of Lazarus, when he was sick, you are like, tell, tell someone to call out Jesus. It took them four days. When Jesus came in, after four days, and Lazarus was already dead, imagine, imagine, imagine the flexion of the sisters. It seemed like that Jesus was just going farther and farther. Do you want another one? The disciples, they were at the storm inside of the boat. 
and that storm of, uh, are we gonna die, are we not gonna die? And then out of nowhere, you just see Jesus walking in the water. There's a there's a verse in the Bible that says that it looked like Jesus was just gonna pass by the the boat, and when they saw Jesus, they just they just asked and they said, Jesus, if this is you, please just order me to go to you. If this is you, just tell me to go to you. And Peter just goes and he starts sinking. But Jesus, he always comes to help him out. My people, there are times that Jesus, it looks like Jesus isn't going to do anything. It looks like God doesn't look at us, right? Yeah. There's sometimes that the struggles are so, so big that the answers doesn't come. The help doesn't come. We didn't get the answers, the help that we want. But the most important, it is about us not to give up. We can't give up. The, the important thing, it is us looking to what's eternal. The persistence of the men, what defines men. It is what helps the heart of Jesus to actually move. And the look of Jesus actually look at us. The Lord Jesus is here to actually teach us. Nobody likes to be taught. No, nobody likes to be taught. The first thing that the youths, hmm, terrible. The, the the parents are there just talking and talking, and the youths still don't want to be taught. But many times the Lord, at this waiting, it seems like He was just going forward and farther. Do you know many times what it looks like? It looks like the Lord is working on our hearts. God is working on our hearts. He's taking out all the incredulity. And he sometimes he says, You're truly an independent of the Lord. Those who give up, those who don't care, they, they lose the blessing. But those who actually keep going forward, keep going after, stay firm, the faith are at it. That's what happened to these people here. And they were there, Jesus was there. And what has it done? And they just said, uh, stay with us. This is the victory of the Lord. It is to say, Lord, stay with us. Please, Lord, stay with us. Don't leave me alone. Don't leave me at this dark, dark night. Don't leave my side. It is, it is late. Jesus goes. And he enters the house. And there he gets the bread inside of the, in the table. He glorifies the, the Father. He breaks the bread. And at that moment, he is recognized by those disciples. My Lord, uh, the man will only see the blessings of the Lord. He only, he only have intimacy with the Lord. He only have fellowship with the Lord when he says, Lord, stay with us. He stay with us when he persists in the path. When he doesn't give up anymore, many give up in the middle of the walk. Many. But it is at this moment of struggle, this moment of struggle is the moment of wait. It is at the movement of the Lord and the acting of the Lord that many just hand over the blessing. Many. The blessing is ready here. Ready to come. But you just give up and leave the path you just let Jesus keep walking and they don't say Jesus stay with us Jesus have mercy on me in moments like this, this these are moments that Jesus wants to work in the heart of man we are going to understand that Jesus will never give us a struggle that we can never handle put this in your head God will never give you Something that you cannot, you can never handle. And many times the enemy, he acts in the mind. He acts in the mind, you know. He he talks and says, "Hey, look, you don't plead the Lord. You don't do this. You're this. You're that. You're not. You cannot be oh, under the presence of the Lord anymore. You're a sinner. There's many things. This doesn't proceed the Lord." This is this doesn't come from the Lord. Youth, this don't come from the Lord. When you when you hear this, when the enemy put this in your head, you are 
you are now worthy of being in the presence of the Lord. You are now worthy to work from the Lord. You are now worthy to play in the church because you're a sinner. This doesn't come from the Lord. Because the Lord loves men. The Lord knows us. He knows all of our limitations. He knows our weakness. And He's here in your disposal to actually make us stronger. To take us. And it is at the breaking of the bread. Because when the bread is broken, we, we are going to see what's inside of the bread. When the, bro the, when the bread is broken in half, we can actually see the inside. And we're going to see the mysteries of the Lord. The richness. Everything that's here in the word of the Lord. You're going to have now intimacy. You're going to be able now to talk to the Lord. And see all the resources coming from eternity. You're going to find out all the you're going to find out that there's the word uh, there's a prophecy there, that the history is good it is good but the history doesn't take men anywhere otherwise the history actually it is on the way to actually take men to the lord when breaking the bread the the man discovers everything but for you to actually get to the breaking of the bread you got to have the revelation of the lord know the word of the lord Give value to the word of the Lord. Never forget the promises of the Lord. Never forget what Jesus told you one day when you came to the Lord. When the Lord brought you from the sin, from the world. When he brought you from all the addictions. Don't forget about the promises of the Lord. There are many mothers that carry the promises from the Son. Oh, the Lord showed me that... Uh, my son, my son will be a pastor working one day, right? Right, okay, yeah, fight for that. Fight for that. But now, but now, oh, Jesus said, but I'm not gonna do anything, I'm, I'm just gonna be quiet, I'm not gonna do anything. And Jesus said that he's gonna be a pastor, and okay, I'm just gonna leave it and leave it to God. No, God gave a responsibility. Remember the mother of Jacob? Do you guys remember the mother of Jacob? Jacob. And so, she knew, she had a message from the Lord, she knew what was happening over there. So we gotta fight for it. We cannot give up. Don't, don't just give, give up of the promises of the Lord. Don't give up on what the Lord told you about my life, about your life. Don't, don't do that. Just fight so you can actually get to know at the deepest of what the Lord has revealed for you, for your church. And the only promise that it hasn't been fulfilled yet, do you know what it is? What is it? It is Jesus coming back. Pretty much everything has been, has happened. Everything that it is written down has happened. Now the only thing that we, we're waiting for, it is Jesus coming back. It's taken a little long. It, it looks like Jesus is going farther and farther. It's it's taking way too long. I think I'm going to just give up. I'm not going to do this anymore. But look, this is going to happen. You wanting it or not, you wanting you to be in the Lord or not, this is going to happen. Regardless what you want, regardless of what I want, the Jesus coming back, this is one thing that's definitely going to happen. Just like everything that was in the, in the Word has happened. But now we just got to be ready for that. And it's by the breaking of the bread the disciples go back and now Jesus the two disciples they go back to Jerusalem they meet with the with the with the other people and now they go there and Jesus just show up to them there where they were they were all together where they were having a service to the Lord Jesus just shows up and says look peace be with you all they were probably super scared right Imagine a little group of sheep without anything, you know, over there, just confusion, where we're we going, what we're we going to do, this and that. And out of nowhere, Jesus just shows up and says, don't be afraid. Peace be, be with you all. This is what Lord has for us. At, uh, at times of turbulence, at uh, times of struggles, at the world that we live in, what's the word of the Lord for us right now? Peace be with you all. Don't be afraid. Because He's present. He's alive among us. He's not in Jerusalem. 
he's not at a Tomo where he was put in. Why? Because he has bitten him. He has been resurrected, and now he lives inside of our hearts. Amen. The Lord blesses. Let's, let's hear a song. Glory to Jesus. Let's stand up at this time. Let's have a word of adoration to the Lord. Because very soon to the to the heaven he'll take us. Glory to Jesus. Let's have a word of glorification to the Lord. Oh Lord, we adore you. We want to thank you. My Lord, for this day, <clears throat> because the returning of the Lord, because we know that you're coming back to get your people, a people that was prepared and separated for you to be with you in eternity. We thank you, Lord, because even though many think that it's taking a bit longer, a bit too long f for you to return, we still hear firm in the promise of the Lord in the project. And going by everything that you have taught us, everything that you have s said to the people. And we thank you, Lord, because our eyes were open to see not not historical Jesus, but the Jesus that was revealed, the one that will come back to actually get his church. We thank you, Lord, and we thank you. We give you 
we give you our hearts, our hearts that are happy, a grateful heart, because this is a big day, and we thank you for everything. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, amen. Glorified be in the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Glorify be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. My brothers, have you have you already imagined this? Have you imagined seeing your name being called? 
in the middle of many names. God, call out your name. Your full name. He does that. He's gonna do it. It's gonna be a moment where we're gonna find our good pastor. And everything will go away. Everything will go away. It's gonna be the moment of our victory. But for that, we need to, to beat many things. We gotta keep the word of the Lord. Let the Holy Spirit work in our hearts, open our eyes. Our heart needs to, to feel the pain because when the Lord talks, when we read the, the Bible, the, the heart of the man hurts. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is right there. The author is, is right there talking to your heart. You're not reading anything, any other book. You're reading the, the word of the Lord. So that's why our heart feels this pain. That's why our eyes are open. Because it is the moment that the Lord reveals itself to us. But when the Lord reveals itself to us, He managed to change, do a truly change. Amen. The Lord has shown a couple gifts. The gifts were, were sad inside of the Word. Hear about the good Father. That he, the good Chapter. That don't fear, the Lord is always with us. There's another one that uh, a man walked in here. The Lord testified and, and top, uh, testified. And he said about all of his sins and everything. And the Lord does it. And when the Holy Spirit visits our hearts, He shows what's our mistakes. But now, you just got to fix that. You decide if you want to fix it or not. But God knows us. But let's pray and interrupt in the service. Oh Lord, Father, we glorify your name for another week that's starting. For another week that we can say that by faith, we're going to leave victorious. We glorify you, Lord, for the service that was the entire service offered to you. Receive all of our glorification. And all we want is that this big day gets you faster. All that we want that this big day happen quickly. And we're going to be forever in the hearts of our Savior. This is our joy. This is what moves us. This is what makes us come back to your house. This is what makes us, your word is what makes us always go back to you. Receive our glorification and give us uh, a night of rest in your word. The prayer we do in the name of Jesus, amen. In your, in your name we say that the holy grace of our God Father, the love of Christ, all eternal Father, and sweet and eternal consolations, and the comfort, and the fellowship with the Holy Spirit could be poured upon us now and forevermore. Amen. The brothers may be seated. And now I've learned that this microphone here, it talk, when you talk a lot, this one, the battery goes down easily. This is a, a thermostat. When you talk too much, the battery goes out. <laughs> It's just like this. Uh, so let's. So the brothers that are connected through Zoom, they can open their microphones, greet each other, and if you want to pray through all the the workers that are here, the deacons, you can go go ahead and ask me and Pastor Sabda are here to pray for the brothers, for the Zoom as well if needed, and we're gonna be giving out assistance here for the brothers. So peace of the Lord to everybody.